Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. For those of you who are new, my name is Sonia. I love makeup and if you love makeup too, I invite you to continue watching. So for today's video, I was gonna do another buy or bust, but I decided to scrap that and maybe move that to next week. I really need to allow for more time in between those videos because if I'm just looking through Trend Mood, Beauty News Official, whatever, it just makes me think about buying makeup and I feel like that's the last thing I need to think about. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Sonia, you need to make a video about something that you're really, truly passionate about. And what I'm really, truly passionate about is drugstore lip balms. I love lip balms. I love lipstick, lip gloss. I'm a big like lip product person in general. I love lip balms. I'm always the friend that carries around extra hand lotion, extra lip balms. I literally, like I found four in my purse the other day. Hold on, one second. Okay, I'll go get it. Hello. Okay, so. One, two, this is a lip gloss, but I think we should count it. And I guess I took the other one out, but it's right here, four. I don't know if this is something I should like be proud of. Is this concerning? But yeah, I love lip balms. I'm obsessed with feeling like moisturized and hydrated. I love when my skin looks all plump and healthy. That could probably be accomplished if I drank more water, but I didn't come here to attack myself. Firstly, I think I should start off by telling you what I look for in a lip balm because your preferences might be different from mine. I like them thick, I like them sticky. I like my lips to feel like smothered by lip balm, almost like a lip mask. I love trying new products, so I almost never buy the same lip balm twice in a row with a couple exceptions, but we'll like get to those later. As a result of both my love for lip products and my tendency to want to try new things, I have, tried out, tested out a lot of different drugstore lip balms. I personally live in the Northeast USA. Winter is coming. I hate winter because it's dry. But if you live in a dry place or you live in the Northeast US or you live somewhere cold or you just like lip balms, I figured this video might be helpful for you. I'm trying to create like an unabridged guide to drugstore lip balms. So yeah, I'm gonna share my drugstore lip balm opinions with you guys. If you have any suggestions for me or things that you'd like for me to review, please leave it in the comments below and I will do that. So I think to start off with, we'll start with everybody's favorite rubber egg, the EOS lip balms. I hate these and I hate myself for hating these. It's not like I went into it thinking, oh, I'm gonna hate this lip balm. It just, it just kind of happened. I can't control it. So when the EOS lip balms first started becoming a thing, I was definitely in high school, I think. I must've been like a freshman or a sophomore. That's when they were becoming a big thing. Everyone I knew was obsessed with them. Everyone I knew. And I don't even blame them because if you look at the packaging, don't you just wanna like bite it a little? Don't you wanna eat it? If I could buy all of them in all the different colors, I would. But there's no point because the product sucks. To me, it has the most aesthetically pleasing packaging. Like I love it. I just wanna open it up and whip it out and like apply it and I'm gonna look so cute doing it. And I know that. But thinking back to the first time I used it, sure it was really satisfying to like open it up and slather it on. But I remember specifically thinking, oh, I don't love this. I pretty much immediately discovered that I didn't like the feeling of those lip balms at all. They look pretty, they smell good, they taste good, but the problem is the formula is really, really waxy and it's not that moisturizing. So all it does is just create this film on top of your lips. It just kind of like sits on top of your lips instead of providing moisture or conditioning your lips. And it is just like not long lasting at all. I feel like once you open your mouth to speak after applying it, it melts right off. And as you can probably tell, I open my mouth to speak a lot. I'm a chatty Kathy. What makes this even worse is that despite not liking this product, I have definitely purchased it at least five times in my life. Yeah. I bought one a couple months ago, fully knowing that I don't enjoy the product, fully knowing that I wasn't going to like it, and I bought it anyway. God, it's that packaging. It just like draws you right in, soft touch rubber and everything. I don't know why I did it. It was a total waste of money. I brought this upon myself and I continue to use it because I bought it, even though I don't like it. It works in a pinch as kind of an emergency lip balm, but it really doesn't do much to soothe my chapped lips. I'm here to tell you, the EOS lip balms are not all that. It's literally just pretty packaging and it smells nice and it's in a little ball, that's it. I think with the EOS balms, you're paying for the packaging, you're paying for the aesthetic, you're not paying all that much for the product itself. And if you're fine with that, like 
go ahead. Like, who am I to say anything about that? I've bought five of them and I hate the product. So I, def I get where you're coming from. Also, I should probably like put a disclaimer in this video. If you enjoy these products and they work for you, that's great. I'm not over here trying to tell you your favorite lip balm sucks. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to review the lip balms that I've tried and give you my experience with them. I'm not out here like trying to hate on your favorite products. That is that's not my goal. I just want to make that crystal clear before I continue. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the EOS lip balms. And now I'm going to move on to Burt's Bees. This is another, I think, controversial opinion. I love the aesthetic of Burt's Bees. I love Burt. I love bees. You'd think that I would love the combination together, right? You'd think I'd love this product. Wrong. I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and say that the Burt's Bees chapsticks are one of my least favorite formulas that I've ever tried. It is so disappointing to see this cute product with its cute packaging and everyone loves it. Everyone is using it. So you head on over to the drugstore, you pay four whole dollars for it, and it's so disappointing because it stinks. And then you decide to lie to yourself and use the product anyway, and you try to convince yourself you like it. But at the end of the day, you have to admit, it's not that good, or at least, I'm admitting to you that I don't think it's that good. Sorry. I think it's something with the beeswax. It's just not moisturizing at all. I am completely gobsmacked that anybody likes this product. I mean, like, how uh, do you guys like this product? It doesn't work for you. Let me know in the comments. I do not find this lip balm to be conditioning at all. I do not find it to be moisturizing at all. I feel like all it does is just create like this seal over your lips. And I don't like that in a lip balm. I feel like a lip balm is supposed to do two different things. To me, a good lip balm is one that provides moisture, but that also seals that moisture in on your lips. And I feel like Burt's Bees chapsticks only do the sealing and they don't do the actual moisturizing. For those reasons, it is not my favorite lip balm, but I do wanna put it out there that I really gave these a fair shot. I've tried these lip balms more than once and I've come to the same conclusion that I just do not enjoy them. They do not work for me. However, Burt's Bees does make kind of a sister product to the chapsticks. I can't remember the name. Let me look it up. Oh, okay. So the sister product is called the Burt's Bees Lip Shimmers. Just so you guys know, if you are looking for pricing or want to know where to find the products, I'm going to have that in the description box below. Strangely enough, the Burt's Bees Lip Shimmers are actually kind of good. When I was in high school, instead of wearing lipstick, I wore the shimmer lip products in the shades Fig and Plum. Like I loved those. And actually my grandma really loves them too. She loves the shade Plum. Those for whatever reason, I do find to be moisturizing for the lips and very comfortable to wear. But the actual original chapstick, I am not a big proponent of. I'm not a huge fan. Oh my God, I had five lip balms, five. Five. This one, however, we will talk about later in the video. So next I wanna talk about Vaseline, their lip therapy, and kind of in that same vein, their rosy lip therapy. I am personally a Vaseline fan. I'm a Vaseline lover. I'm a Vaseline user. It's literally what I've been using my whole life to heal chapped lips or cuts on my lips. I actually recently went through an entire like full size tub of Vaseline and it has been the greatest accomplishment of my entire life. I love the formula. I find it to be so soothing for dry or chapped lips. And even if it wears off, my skin still feels like soft and smooth afterwards. While I am a really big fan of the original Vaseline Lip Therapy, I also love the Rosy Lip Therapy. I think it's so cute, it has this little red tint to it. I do think it's cute. I will say, that the moisture you get from the product fades a little faster than it would if you were using the original Vaseline. But even if the moisturization leaves, the tint remains on your lips, which I kind of like, it looks really nice. My only complaint with, I don't know if I would make the same complaint with both of those products, but definitely with the rosy one, my complaint is the packaging. So the packaging for the rosy lip therapy is the same as the original lip therapy. It comes in that little like tub. So you open up the tub, you have to apply the product with your fingers and then you have to wipe your fingers off because they'll be red and sticky. Usually with the original Vaseline, if I have excess product on my fingers, I like rub it into my cuticles, but I can't exactly do the same thing with the rosy version of the product because it's pink and sticky. The rosy version is a lot more sticky than the original. So my complaint with that product would be the packaging. I would love for Vaseline as a brand to come out with their products in like stick form, like a normal lip balm. I know they're modeling the packaging after their original packaging, like that's their brand hallmark, but I, I get that, 
but I just don't find it to be very convenient or user-friendly. If I wanted to take that product on the go, use it wherever I'm going, it would be much easier to have it in stick form instead of in like a little tub that I have to put my grubby little fingers in. Plus, if you like to have longer nails and you go to scoop out the product, stuff can get like stuck under your fingers and that's really nasty. Plus, if you're using the tinted formula and it accidentally gets under your nails, you might be in danger of accidentally getting it on your favorite white sweater that you wore just to impress your crush at that Christmas party in high school. Not saying that happened to me though, just a hypothetical situation that one might find themselves in at some point in time. Just saying hypothetically, if that would have ever been a situation, if that had ever happened, that would stink a lot. I think for Vaseline to change up their packaging and switch it up a little, that would surprise people. It might draw them more towards the product because if it's in a tube, it might be a little more user-friendly. And I also think it would be really cool to have them come out with different scents, different flavors, different colored tints. I think that would sell really, really well, or at least they'd sell to me really, really well. I would buy them. Ultimately, the original product was sold as like a skin protectant. If you have like an open wound or something like that, it'll moisturize it and seal it up. If I accidentally like nick myself shaving, if my lips are really wind burnt and chapped, this product works to seal them up and heal them. And it's just really effective and really versatile and I could not recommend it enough. So now I'm gonna move on to another product that I don't like necessarily love. It's the original chapstick. In my family, we were a chapstick family for literally the longest time. I remember my dad would carry around several chapsticks wherever he went. He would get my brother and me little chapsticks to carry around to school in our bags in case we needed them. We used chapsticks, we loved chapsticks, but I am older now. I am smarter now. I am wiser now. And I figured out that I don't really like this product. The problem with chapstick specifically, like chapstick as a brand, is that the more I use their product, the more I feel the need to use their product. I feel like my lips become reliant on chapstick and I don't like that or appreciate that. Chapstick will work in a pinch if you don't have any other options. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as like my first, like definitely go buy that. I wouldn't recommend that because I do find that your lips become reliant on the product. So yeah, it's good in a pinch if you don't have anything else. And honestly, they don't even taste that bad. If you hear that noise, that's my hamster running in the corner, please don't. Please ignore it. Okay, I'm back. I give her a snack that seemed to have solved the problem. I do not endorse eating chapstick. I wanna put that out there. I do not endorse that. Please do not do that. But if you apply it, you're bound to like consume a little bit of it. Just for reference, the strawberry banana kind is delicious. The regular strawberry is also kind of good. Birthday cake was my favorite for a long time, but I was way past like chapstick eating age at that point. At that point, it was a little, a little weird, I think. The original, doesn't taste as bad as you might think. But again, do not eat these. I do not endorse that. I would not fully recommend chapstick just because you do have to reapply a lot throughout the day. And the more you reapply, the more you need it because your lips become reliant on the product. And I do not like it when products do that because I'm, I like, ah, I am looking for something that's gonna leave my lips moisturized all day without too many reapplications. So next, I wanna talk about the Carmex lip balms. I bought a pack of four of these so I could have one for my purse, one for my bedside table, an extra one just for if I run out of one, and a car chapstick. I like these a lot. I know that these are a little controversial, but honestly, I personally like them, and I like that this one has SPF. I think this moisturizes really well. This is my ideal sort of texture for a lip balm. It goes on clear, it's really shiny. And since it's medicated and has sun protection, I can put this over zits that I've popped and they heal pretty well the next morning. I do pop my zits kind of the second they come up. So this is helpful for if I don't want anything else like getting into them and making the wound worse. I don't wanna recommend that you put this on your face because I personally don't know your skin type. I don't know if this is going to cause a reaction, if this will clog your pores. I personally don't really have like sensitive skin like that. My skin is oily and typically not as sensitive to harsher chemicals. So I feel fine putting this on my skin, but if you have sensitive skin or you're allergic to this product in any way, 
please do not put this on your zits. You can try it if you want to, but if you think it's gonna break you out, please steer clear. I love this formula. It's really heavy on the lips. I feel like it fills in lines on my lips, so they look nicer after I've applied this. It lasts a pretty long time after you moisturize as well. I don't find that I have to reapply this all that often throughout the day, which is really nice. And when it does wear off, my lips don't feel dry. They don't feel chapped. They just feel soft and moisturized. And if I need more throughout the day, I can always put more on. I have not noticed my lips becoming reliant on this product. I think it's really nice, even though it does have a bit of like a minty sort of feeling, sort of smell. If the minty sort of phenol smell bothers you a lot, then I would steer clear of this. But if you're okay with just a little bit of it, then I don't know, you might wanna try it out. Plus, these are super inexpensive. I'll put the exact price in the description box, but I remember these being like super cheap. It's inexpensive and efficient. I very much recommend these. So next, I'm gonna talk about good old Aquaphor. Listen, I love Aquaphor. I love it. Anyone I've gotten into a conversation with about lip balms has said that they love Aquaphor. My boyfriend loves Aquaphor. I love Aquaphor. It is so versatile. I use it on my lips. I use it under my eyes. I use it over zits I've popped. After I got my tattoo done, the artist recommended that I apply Aquaphor over it to help it heal. And I mean, I did because that's what he said I should do, but I use it for my lips. I use it on zits. I used it to protect my tattoo after I got it done. It is just a very flexible product. Aquaphor is just a tried and true favorite of mine. It is really lightweight for how moisturizing it is. And that always surprises me every time I use it. Even though I do enjoy the heavy sort of feeling of lip balm, I don't mind that it's so lightweight because it is so moisturizing. And my only complaint about this product is that the moisturization doesn't last terribly long like it doesn't last as long as something like this would you do have to reapply throughout the day but i don't mind that so much just because you don't have to reapply every hour on the hour like you would have to with burt's bees or chapstick or eos lip balms my lips look better after i've applied it if my lips are super dry it's extremely soothing even if they're wind burnt or like in really really bad shape like they're peeling or something like that Aquaphor helps a lot. I definitely recommend Aquaphor. So next up, I'm gonna talk about this Neutrogena Revitalizing Lip Balm. I've always been fascinated with this one because I like the packaging. I just realized it does have SPF in it, which is also nice. This is the tinted version. It's like this pretty rosy color. It's super cute, very sheer. It's very natural and it it is a fantastic lip balm. It is so nice. It does have sort of a fruity scent to it, but it's not overpowering and it's really, it's really pleasant. This specifically is the shade Sunny Berry. This does look like a Sunny Berry, I would say. It moisturizes so nicely. And when I bought it, I kind of expected there to be a waxy feeling to it, but this doesn't feel waxy at all. It feels really, really comfortable and really moisturizing. In no way does this feel like it's sitting on the lips, like it's just a film over the lips. I really do feel like this conditions my lips as well as makes them look really pretty. It makes all the lines look filled in. It adds just such a nice flattering shine and tint. I feel like my lips look bigger after I use it too. However, I will put this out there. I have not been using this product for very long. So I think in a future video, I will update you guys and let you know how this works out but so far I'm liking it. We'll see how this works out long-term. For now, I'm enjoying it, but I will definitely let you guys know if my opinion changes. So moving on from that, I'm gonna talk about a product that is super popular. Like I see everyone everywhere using this. It's the Smith's Rosebud Salve. Salve? I don't know. Salve? Salve. Salve, okay, I got it right the first time. So if you guys have been wondering about this stuff, wonder no longer. I'm here to tell you that it's okay. It's okay. It's not bad, it's not my favorite, it, it gets the job done. Definitely not the best that I personally have ever tried, but I know that a lot of people love this lip balm. My cousin loves this lip balm, it's her favorite. And I get it, it's really cute, it comes in a cute little tin, it has this nice rosy tint to it. When you apply it, it makes your lips look glossy. It's pretty, I enjoy the product a lot for aesthetic purposes, if that makes sense. I'm a little iffy on the actual functionality of it as a lip balm, but it sure is cute. The tin is adorable, I feel so cute using it. Like, ah, let me just pull out my little rosebud salve. Look how cute I am applying my rosebud salve. It is cute, the initial moisturization and shine is really nice, but I feel that I have to reapply really often. So it is a little pricey for a drugstore lip balm. It's $7 for that little tin. And I don't find that 
to be worth the price. It like evaporates off the lips within the hour. But if you enjoy the experience of using the lip balm, if you like the packaging, if you like the smell, if you like the initial shine and the color of the product, then yeah, go ahead, get it. I will say I do enjoy the rosy smell a lot. I find it to be really delicate and it's not very strong or overpowering. I like smelling the roses. The product itself gives the user a very pleasant experience, which is why I continue to use it despite not liking that product so much. The Rosebud Salve is the lip balm that I use if I'm at my boyfriend's house. He keeps a little tin for me with his little skincare collection. So if I'm at his house, I will use that because it's just right there. It's available for me to use. Why not use it? We both love the smell. I love that it has a little tint to it. But if I were to have it at home among all my other lip balms that I use and love, I do not think that I would reach for it all that often. Okay. Okay. Getting down to business. We're gonna talk about my least favorite chapstick in the entire world, Blistex. Blistex chapsticks. I fully believe that Blistex was conceptualized, formulated, and produced in the seventh circle of hell. Who put this out on the market? Who? I, I'm not mad, okay? I just wanna talk. This product will be perfect for you if you hate moisturization and love it when your eyes burn. The fragrance firstly, of this product is absolutely unbearable. I have a bit of a sensitive nose and the smell of phenol in this product is so strong that when I apply it to my lips, I get a whiff of it and my eyes literally start to burn in water. The phenol is the ingredient in the product that makes it feel like cool and minty, but it is just so offensive in Blistex that the second I apply it, my lips start to literally burn and they feel even worse than they did before I applied it. Ugh, ugh, they feel like disgusting and dry. And on top of that, the lip balm itself is so waxy. It does not provide any sort of moisturization at all. All it does is burn up your lips and then it seals in all that minty, dry crustiness and you end up feeling worse than you did before you applied the product. How does that work? This product is so like disgustingly drying. I do not understand how this could be marketed as a lip balm. Since we're talking about Blistex, I'll tell you about the worst lip product I have ever used, ever. The Blistex Conditioning Serum. Like, who even are you? Don't even talk to me. You see this product at the store? You look away, you walk away, you don't pay any attention. That's what it wants. It's the pump, the pump you see is the bait. That's how they're trying to get you. But don't let them fool you. The pump is the only good thing about this product. They're just trying to get inside your head. They're just trying to get in there and confuse you. Don't let them, you're stronger than this. This so-called conditioning serum is neither conditioning nor is it a serum. It's like putting hotel hand lotion on your lips. This product actually dried out my lips. The more I put on, the worse it would get. I looked like my middle name was Windburn by the end of the day. Your lips look and feel dry. They look and feel windburnt. And on top of that, they look ridiculous because this product leaves a white cast. It leaves this white film on top of your lips and it literally does not go away. It is so unflattering. Even if you rub it in, it remains on your lips. You have to use such a tiny amount if you want this product to look transparent on your lips. It's completely pointless at that point. I carried this product around with me for a while to all my classes just to test it out because I was so sure, oh, it has a pump, it must be good. I was wrong, I was so wrong, I can't even tell you. If I used that chapstick exclusively throughout the day, my lips would be peeling by the end of the day, literally peeling, flaking and peeling. I have a grudge against this product, the likes of which you have never seen. And I know how to hold a grudge. One time, three years ago, my brother ate my Taco Bell burrito. I have not let them live it down since then. I know how to hold a grudge, okay? And I have a grudge against this product. It stinks. Do not waste your money on it. It is way too expensive. You are paying for the pump. The pump itself is fine. It just stinks that the lip product sucks. I'm clearly feeling very passionately about this. I have a lot of feelings about this product. I hate it. I hate it. Don't use it. Don't waste your time on it. Don't waste your money on it. Don't waste your precious energy, your precious emotions on this product because it is the worst. It is the worst lip balm I have ever tried in my life. The biggest waste of money ever. It sucks. Don't buy it. <sighs> okay, center yourself. Take a deep breath. You threw it away, Sonia. It can't hurt you anymore. 
It can't hurt you. Okay, guys, we're almost done. We have one left. It is the creme de la creme of lip balms, in my opinion. I have two tubes of this sitting right here. They were both in my purse. I think I have one in my car. I think I have one in like a jacket over there. I, oh God, I love you. This baby is the Mario Badescu Shea Butter Lip Balm. It's my favorite. It's a holy grail. I bought this lip balm for the first time, I think when my boyfriend and I went on vacation to visit his family in Georgia. I bought it from like a store there, duh. Where else would I get it from? Since buying that original tube, I think I have repurchased this product, I wanna say five times, six times, and I've gone through almost every single tube. This particular lip balm, I have taken a lot of care not to lose this. I am notorious for losing lip balms, receipts, anything that might be deemed important, I'll probably lose it. But these, I keep really good track of these because they are my favorite. They're exactly to a T what I look for in a lip balm. They are heavy. They are hydrating. They're a little sticky, but not that much. These feel like a lip mask. They are so moisturizing. They make your lips so shiny and they smell so good. The moisturization on these, it lasts forever. I only have to, re if I use this, I really only have to reapply maybe twice more in the day, three times if I'm eating or something. This is such a good lip balm. I really, these are my favorite. These are my favorite. I cannot recommend these enough. They are so amazing. I really wish they would come out with like a tinted formula. I think that would be really cool. They definitely have my business if they came out with a tinted formula. Actually, them coming out with a tinted formula would be really bad for my bank account because these are kind of pricey for a drugstore lip balm. I'm only including it in this video because A, it's my favorite, and B, you can get this at Ulta. It is a whopping $8 for a tube of this. Yeah, it is um, $8. That pains me a little bit to say, if I'm being quite honest, because I don't like to spend $8 on anything I don't have to spend $8 on. But this product, it is, it is so worth it. I can't even tell you. I love you. Please never leave me. Just kidding, this tube is probably gonna leave me soon because it's almost empty. I've literally squeezed the life out of it. I don't think I'm gonna need another tube soon because I haven't finished up the other three tubes I own. But what if I need a backup? What if I need a backup? These are the important questions. These are the questions I should be asking. So yeah, guys, that concludes this video. My unabridged guide to drugstore lip balms. I don't, I call it unabridged because this guide is not fully finished. I have not tried every single lip balm from every single drugstore ever, which is why this is unabridged. As I try more lip balms, I will definitely be sure to keep in mind my notes on them, how it works, how long they wear. And in a couple months, when I've tried out some more lip balms, I can make another video for you guys. So I'm thinking about doing several videos of this just so I can make it into a playlist. And by the end of the playlist, you'll have an unabridged abridged guide to drugstore lip balms. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please comment down below and tell me what your favorite lip balm is. If I haven't tried it, I'm definitely gonna go out and try it. If you have any suggestions for things for me to try, or if you wanna know if a certain lip balm is good before you try it, also let me know in the comments. Also, comment down below if you have any lip balms you hate and we can hate on them together. That, my friends, is real solidarity. Also, please feel free to subscribe, should you feel so inclined. I know that I would love to have you here. Okay, I like changed, I'm about to like wipe off my makeup, but I wanted to hop in here really quickly before I sign off to say thank you. You guys, I, I reached 50 subscribers the other day, and I know that's not a lot in like the grand scheme of YouTube, and I know that there are channels out there with millions of subscribers, thousands of subscribers, and I just got to 50, but it, means so much to me. I literally can't even tell you. I wanna do like a fun sort of dedicated video to thanking you guys for subscribing, for liking, for watching, for any, any sort of interaction you do because it really does mean the world to me. It really does. I had been scared to start my YouTube channel for such a long time and I finally did this year and it's one of the best things I've ever done for myself. And you guys have just shown me that my hard work has paid off that I can build a small community with people who love makeup just like I do. That is just such a heartwarming and beautiful thing to me. And I really just wanted to give you a heartfelt thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love all of you guys. So with that being said, I'll let you guys go for the evening. 
Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day and I hope to see you back soon. Bye.